Alright guys, I wanted to make a quick video here showing how to use the MSD 6010 software which I promised I would do for a while now so now as good as ever to start. Anyway, this is uh, when you open up the software from MSD you get a couple of windows here. This is just how I have mine scaled, how it looks. But it's just the main data editor and then this thing is just uh, like their main window here so you can transfer or change some settings. But basically what you're going to look at here is this is the timing curve on the box just by RPM. So depending on the RPM it sets the amount of timing. Fairly simple. And then this is for the map sensor up here. And what's funny is uh, you can just run this on on map sensor, not map sensor, but RPM only, RPM versus timing. So at 3500 it is 15 degrees and 1500 it is 12, something like this you would, if you were all motor you'd put like 25 into the thing the whole time. And then what sucks about this is when you're cruising there's no way to add timing for cruise. So what you normally do is hook up a map sensor. But now what's really funny about MSD's software is the scale is wrong. This is uh, if you choose a two bar map sensor you say, hey I have a two bar. Now this doesn't make any sense. A two bar map sensor reads vacuum, one bar of vacuum, and one bar of boost which is 15 pounds. A one bar only reads vacuum. So this is fucking stupid here, pardon me, one bar it says is 15 psi. That's completely wrong. <laughs> one bar can only read vacuum, it can't read boost at all. So what's stupid about this is I have chosen a two bar. It makes it kind of easy though. It shows 30 pounds of boost at the top of my two bar, which a two bar map if you take it out of the junkyard can only read 14 psi. So it should have a zero here and it should say vacuum and on the other side of this 14 it should say boost. But they wrote the software incorrectly. There's no good way to uh, fix this. And I have also actually called them on the phone and said that their scale is wrong. And I got into an argument with the guy on the phone. He's like, just key it on and look at it. And that's where you're, you go up and down from there. And I'm like, that doesn't help the fact that your, your scale is wrong in your software. Why wouldn't you guys just fix it? So people aren't uh, choosing a two bar, reading on the internet that a two bar reads 14 pounds. And then they see fucking 30 pounds of boost on the scale. Uh, that's pretty dumb. Anyway, after I rant all of that. Once you have both of these working together, say, you key the car on and it's at zero. It's adding, this is how they work. It takes this table, the RPM table, which is constant, and it adds the map sensor table to it. So, say the car is running, or not even running, you would have the 15 here, and with a two bar map, it's gonna be somewhere in the center here. It's gonna have 12 and they would add together and that creates the total amount of timing. You can confirm this by watching there's other things in here where it says the exact amount of timing and the dials. There you can see the actual amount of timing your motors running, RPM and timing. You can see how they add together. So what I do is how to make a map sensor car idle best is you build a little pocket for idle. It wants to fall into it and then if it wants to stall, it adds timing. See if the RPM tries to drop under like a thousand too far, it starts to add timing. So it actually holds itself nice when it has a little pocket like that. And then also, depending on your cam, it's gonna pull a certain amount of vacuum. So what I always shoot for with like a stock cam car is like 22 to 25 degrees of timing at idle. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this six here, and you're pulling enough timing here, like 23 or you know, 20, so it goes to 26 degrees roughly and bounces around in here, and that'll hold it up nice. And then here's what happens you set your base timing here. If you're going to run, say you're going to run 14 pounds of boost, you would put your maximum amount of timing down here, 15 degrees on motor, and then what happens here is 
at zero, like when you floor the car and it doesn't go into boost, it's at 15 and it's adding 12 degrees. So you get the total number there, you get 27 degrees. And what happens is, is once you start making boost, it quickly falls down the scale until it gets to, you'll see here, 28 degrees. So once it bleeds down to about there, and you see that it's 14, it's 12, you know, this is 12 pounds roughly, depending on where you are, but 12 additional PSI on top of where it ran out. This is uh, coming into boost and that's scaling down. So at 12 pounds it's locked out at 15 because there's zero timing being added in to the base table of 15 degrees. So this is like a good, a decent timing table if you're just starting out on pump gas or whatever for a turbo LS I would say. Uh, very conservative like 15 pounds if you're running under 10 pounds of boost, 15 degrees is super safe till you get everything working and see how everything else works out for you. But how you would easily fix this is, is if you want to run a little bit more timing, you can just drag this guy up and then, you know, you'll be running fucking 20 degrees that easily. And then you can just hit transfer to MSD, plot to MSD sends this plot to the MSD box. And then the, this other stuff is, is relatively simple. This is your two-step rev limiter, rev limiter low, rev limiter high is your overall rev limiter, and then switched retard is the other wire on the box. But other than that, it's fairly simple. I have these available for download also, some timing tables. And then also I can make them available if people are interested. I can put them in the video link and stuff like that to download them. But I hope this sheds some light so you can set your timing down here. You can honestly make a straight bar here that says 15 degrees all the way across and you can set this up to add 10 degrees so it'll be 25 down here just level this off at 15 and then have it cross over. This is a two bar so halfway up the map and then you have an additional about 14.7 pounds above that for the other part of the one bar and then you can trim it out or do whatever but you just have to remember if you have 15 here and you're running say 7 pounds would be on top of 14 you know somewhere in the middle here this would be the amount of timing going into your motor so it would add about what are we at here we're down to like 5 degrees on top of 15 so it's at like 20 at 7 pounds but that's how you how you bleed it out and then also you can watch your you can open up these gauges again too and see how much timing on the dials you're actually when you're cruising around you could put 40 degrees into the motor like when you lift off for a very light throttle uh, 35 when you're rolling into it and then you should start taking it out once you're on motor I would say you don't need any more than 25 into like a truck motor with an average cam and then you can bleed it out fast and it'll make good power regardless of the amount of timing that's in it really so let me know if you guys have questions or if I explain this very well the map sensor thing is not that great it kinda sucks how they drop the ball on that table so that's always gonna be a little confusing I think for people but the other one is not that bad so let me know if you have questions thanks